Hello everybody, Andrew Casey at Hypersanity Books. Today we'll be talking about a case study to the movie Joker. Now, I just want to say I'm not a therapist, I'm not your therapist. I am just someone who writes books, I also engage in a lot of different contact, I love characterization, I have some experience within some different professions. Otherwise, just for the purposes of today, we're touching on different aspects that will help with your writing. Let's get into it. Number 10. Dark Truisms. I just hope my death makes more sense than my life. With the joke diary, that's not a bad idea for different types of writing styles for you to work on. Now remember in this regards, the idea also comes from when Heath Ledger did his Joker, he had the diary that showed different interpretations on how the character was developing when he was locked away for that time in a hotel. Now, being respectful to this current story, there are some dark truisms that he says within a lot of the humour and jokes. That might work well for you. Now remember, we have flat characters, round characters, and then we have case studies, which will add more information to a character because of how much time you're spending with the character throughout the story. Though, on the point with thinking about that, sometimes it's handy to have a diary or to play on words, play through some dark humour, and the more you do engage with that, the easier it can become to think of ideas. Number nine, depressive setting. One aspect I want to say about this, you have one part of society, say the top 1% who are successful, and I'm not saying, after learning a lot more about finance and business, not all are evil, etc. Now, into the premise of the story, you hear of the Joker with that main quote that comes up, all it takes is one bad day. Now, when you have a massive society issue like this, it's only a bad day from having the city be thrown into chaos because of a lot of the social and financial economic downfall. you got businesses going out of business. There is a big depression coming. And I feel this story was very realistic how it was made. Even though we're talking about the case study, there is an underlying escalating factor through affecting many people with a lot of different personal struggle. Number eight, personal struggle. I'm sorry, I have a... <laughs> <laughs> One thing with a case study is to have a lot of different struggles that the character goes through. So I just made a very small list that might help with your writing. You have the medication issue, imagination, unreliable first person perspective, hurt feelings, laughter. Card is a good way to interact with people. I have a psychologist that talked about meeting other people who have Tourette's and other disorders. They have carry a card around, or she's suggested for other people to do that. And it's a part of trying to be a part of society. Financially broke, care for his elderly mother, dirty home environment, dirty environment in the city, as previously mentioned, skinny, lost a lot of weight, Never meet your heroes. That is also another big point of this story. Never meet your heroes. The beat down at the beginning of the story, there's already another problem. In Australia, it's been all throughout the news, there are a lot of repeated offenders. There is a serious issue where just about 60% of all small businesses are being hit by delinquent youth. Bro, stop with your shoes, bro. I stop You're gonna be a clown, at least you can be a football, you know that, right? Ah! Hey! Stop it! Ah! Oh! 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 Hey, come on! Be this ass up. Come on, it's got squeak, you can't do nothing. Harder! Harder! Number seven, imagination writing. I wanna say with the scene where Arthur is watching the show and then he's feeling as if he's in the show that's part of the imagination that's not completely delusional. 
Now, within that scene, there is that other factor of life. Don't meet your heroes. Don't put other people on a pedestal in life. You don't have to put other people before yourself, especially in that type of context. You could admire to some different goals, some admirations, but don't put other people above yourself. You see all this, the lights, the show, the audience, all that stuff. I'd give it all up in a heartbeat to have a kid like you. So his imagination for the Murray Franklin show, you could have your imagination going wild and thinking about a structure of something that you're familiar with and take that into your writing. Pretend that you're in the setting and write. The other one I want to focus on is when he's watching the TVs being played and he's pretending to walk out as if he's walking out onto the show. That's not a bad idea for some of your writing. And that type of engagement works well using your imagination to write. There is also the other part where he has the gun and he's playing around with it. Yeah, so be careful with using your imagination, especially when you're being physical with your imagination. Sometimes using your imagination, you can talk to your imaginary friends or your imaginary characters and get advice off them. And if anyone says that crazy, just remember, the characters exist because you made them up. I'm sorry, what's that? That's very funny, Murray. You know, I'm also a comedian. Would you like to hear a joke? Number six, let music take you away. With that scene, it is effective to having earphones in your ears, going to places that you love, and just feeling the environment. Now, with this scene, the music score was created and he acted to the music, whereas normally he acts and music is created. That's how some filmmaking works. Otherwise, in the purposes of writing, with different feelings and different moods to your writing or your characterization, let the music take you away. One bad day creates an illusion. You're fired! Now, there is a coping mechanism to creating a, an illusion. Now, with first-person, unreliable perspective, talking about the mental illness side, not the flawed character side, where people see things differently to what the real world is. Now, Arthur Fleck, he... Then that's what we call him at this stage. He has the recent of losing his job, not handling some things well, or being handed a gun when he really shouldn't have a gun. And, and there is, uh, and honestly, there is a bigger issue at hand. He's not the only person in this environment that's leading towards one bad day. So he has one struggle after another. And one of the things that he does is create the illusion, uh, the delusion that he's with the other girl. So when it comes to that other realization moment, as the viewer, or if you were reading a book and it comes to that realization and this usually happens in this type of story at act three or within an ending to a twist you realize that he was not in a relationship with the girl when it plays the footage from the scenes to show that she was not there he was creating the delusion as a coping mechanism to his pain if that makes sense <laughs> Number four, Penny's delusion does not help. I'm not talking to you until you stop being angry! Okay. Okay. Now, one thing to make clear, her delusions, by not listening or looking at the real evidence of things, and her mental health issues, also play into Arthur's mental health issues. And there is a lot of disturbing uh, frustrations that unfold. And that leads to a lot more of a struggle for Arthur when he finds out the truth of not knowing who he actually is. And that's one of the sad 
depictions of the Joker is not having that origin story that's authentic or real. I'm sorry, I just showed up, but my mother told me everything, and I had to talk to you. Look, pal, I'm You're... not your father. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus, she never told you? Told me what? Your mother adopted you while she was working for us. That's not true. I don't need you to tell me lies. I know it seems strange. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. I don't want anything from you. Maybe a little bit of warmth, maybe a hug, Dad. Penny's delusion as well, it affects Thomas Wayne, who is seen as a high profile character. It affects Bruce Wayne because Arthur is in his own way thinking that he might be his brother. And then it's also affecting Alfred trying to protect the child. Now, there, there is a certain part where he's trying to take a really scary approach to how he's interacting with Bruce Wayne. And then there's another approach where he has a lot of uncertainty because no one's really helping this poor guy. Number three, acknowledgement. One thing I want to say with the character as well, even though he's in that hostile situation to having the other person coming to his house in a threatening way about the gun story to getting the story straight, the other character does not know about this situation. And one thing that Arthur does acknowledge is that he was good to him. Uh, that's one other aspect of the Joker that I do want to point out, that he does acknowledge the people that were nice to him, even though a lot of other people were not nice to him. Number two, climax. Now, I want to say something here. I understand it's a story, so there needs to be conflict. The worst thing that Arthur is doing is going on the show. Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. With that climactic point, th this is the point where he's not caring anymore. And instead of having that marginalized relationship, as I mentioned in the four types of relationships video, it's no longer the little circle being Arthur and the big circle being Murray Franklin. The roles completely reverse. Yes, I'm not saying commit a crime. And that's one of the things with first person perspective, especially first person, unreliable perspective, and case studies. Characters like this do really upset a lot of people when they are created, because some um, interpretations are, oh, this is going to lead to crime. Not necessarily. It's a complicated subject matter. The idea is seeing the story in a very different perspective to what we're used to, and feeling for the character. Now, within this storytelling that is the worst thing that he can do is trying to earn the respect of Murray Franklin by going on the show that's the worst thing that the character can do though for the purposes of the story sometimes there needs to be something happening to drive the story along to be realistic and lead towards problems because problems are a fact of storytelling number one multiple stories the worst thing you can do is relive the trauma the worst thing that a character like this can do is relive the trauma or the trauma that they don't understand or retell the story. Some people make up stories, make up multiple stories, and it just leads to the multiverse of madness because, let's be honest, we all come from different dimensions and different realms. Now, touching on the Bruce Wayne story, his parents have been shot. There's another universe where um, Bruce Wayne was shot, he died, the Joker became Martha Wayne, Thomas Wayne became Batman with a gun. Then, have you ever heard of the other story where Bruce Wayne killed his parents and blamed it on the other guy? That being said, that's one of the things I want to talk about with the subject of different trauma within the characters. And this is the worst thing that a lot of people can do, whether a story is real or not, or struggles. The worst thing to do is to keep reliving it and keep retelling it in different ways. That all said, that's it for today. Hit like, subscribe, comment. I'll be posting more videos on case studies, but that's another story and shall be told another time.